Welcome back, wood lovers. It's Tommy's Tongue Woods. Apparently we have a song now. Um, today, we are gonna look at what was in the 17th century, the most expensive wood in the world. That's right, you guessed it. It's Brazilian king wood. And I got a nice little stack of it here. So, Dalbergia sierensis, endemic to Brazil. Um, not to be confused, or it'd be acceptable to confuse it with Mexican kingwood, which is uh, Dalbergia congestiflora. Congestiflora meaning cluster of flowers, the flowers that you see on the Camatillo tree. Um, and yes, it's easy to see why you might be confused between um, Brazilian kingwood and Mexican kingwood, because they do look virtually the same, um, but I'm sure that they're not. Um, so anyway, so we're going to have a look at these sets. Now this is, um, I have a board, I have a block, and I have a, a set here. Now this set, um, I'm very excited to present to you. I'm very excited to have it and add it to the, uh, to the collection here, to Tommy's Turnwood Vault. I've been waiting, I don't know, about seven months from purchasing this set to it, to it actually arriving. Um, it is a Dalberger, so it is, um, it is listed on the CITES appendix and therefore needs a load of paperwork, um, certification to be exported. But I've got it, I've got it, I've got it, and it's here, and it is wonderful. So I first came across Kingwood when I was uh, furniture making. Um, it was heavily prized. It was, um, they called it Kingwood for a reason. Um, the French loved it. Louis XIV, Louis XV couldn't get enough of it. And so it's called Kingwood. Um, and um, I first came across it when I was furniture making and furniture restoring um, back in 2009. We had this beautiful um, ladies' bureau, uh, a Louis XIV, sorry, Louis XV ladies' bureau, uh, Bureau de Dame, came through the workshop and it was just covered with Kingwood inlay. Um, and um, this set and these, these kind of pieces that I've got here, you'll see this kind of beautiful, um, like browny purple. You see that, Ted? Uh -huh. Absolutely gorgeous stuff. It really does mellow down over time. Um, so for example, this is a piece here that has been really kind of sun bleached, but I just ran it over the planer just now to reveal a bit more of that kind of uh, violet um, purpley hue. Incidentally, one of the, the kind of common names for it is violet wood as well. Here's, here's another piece that I have. And again, look, really kind of dark brown, rosewoody brown, but then run it over the planer. Oh yeah! Lovely, amazing, surprising, purple, majestic beauty. Um, with this lovely kind of creamy, yellowy sapwood um, that you can see there. As you'll, as you'll tell from this board, you know, this is probably like six inches across. Kingwood, they be small trees. This, um, this came from a board which is about nine inches wide. Um, and this has been sawn through and through. So they're basically just taking the log and just t -t 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 slices all the way through. Um, this board actually comes from the middle of the log. You can still see, you can see the pith there. Uh, is that picking up on the camera? I don't know if it is, but trust me, it's there. It's right in the middle. Can you see that, Ted? You see some pith? Uh, no. no. Nobody can see any pith. I can just see your face. You can see my face. Well, there's nothing wrong with that. But you can see that right on this piece here, right down the middle, we've got a crack running all the way through. This is right in the middle of the tree. We've got the pith right there, which is, which is not, not particularly usable. As I've said, it is a Dalberger. It is related to Brazilian rosewood, tulip wood, Indian rosewood, Madagascar rosewood, all of those beautiful Dalbergers. This is the second hardest of the Dalbergers. 3,340 pounds force on the Janker scale, uh, 1.2, specific gravity, 12% uh, moisture content, so it will sink in water. It's got that kind of very characteristic um, rosewoody 
smell. This is beautiful. Um, it's super oily. It's quite difficult to work with. It's particularly abrasive, so it's going to dull your tools. Um, you know, these beautiful timbers really make us work for it. Um, it turns really nicely. Quite often you'll see pen blanks um, from Kingwood chess pieces, and you get this really lovely kind of character that runs through it with the sapwood. That quite often that's included for kind of visual interest. But what does it sound like? Well, by golly. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to show you right now. This is, um, yeah, really lovely stuff. It has that kind of really glassy, bell-like rosewood character that you would expect. Quite complex, lots of overtones. And um, I actually pulled out a similar sized set of uh, Madagascar rosewood, um, just to kind of give you guys a comparison. This piece is a little bigger and has a little bit more of a boom to it. It's actually got a crack in that. So hopefully you can hear that very similar kind of character. I'm getting so carried away here that I almost forgot the most important part of any Tommy's Tonewood episode, and that's to give it a blast with the magic spray. This is just some alcohol here. And uh, you can actually see on this set that I've, I've previously blasted it with magic spray and it's really pulled those oils out. But um, I'm gonna do it again for you guys. Yeah, I love it. I absolutely love it. Look at that. Amazing. Let's try and avoid those lights there. Isn't that great? So you've just got that kind of purple brown, which is just so pretty. Can you see that, Ted? Mm -hmm. Isn't that nice? It's kind of like Indian rosewood, but not quite. It's, it's a little bit, it's a bit prettier. The color is a bit more intense, I think. Um, it's super vibrant, especially when you compare it to something like this. This board is um, this board is probably about 20 years old. Um, it had a, a stamp on here from a, uh, a timber yard that I used to go to when I was a kid that's since closed. Um, so it was nice to find this in another timber yard um, with, with the stamp still on there. If you're local to North Yorkshire, you'll see, you'll recognize the, uh, the John Body stamp just there. Um, so yeah, so that's nice. That's kind of nice for me. Because um, I remember at the time, you know, walking through these timber yards, just thinking, wow, I'd love to be able to get some of that one day. And just thinking, I'm never going to be able to afford Kingwood. Um, but here we are. Here we are. Keep going. And uh, you too will be able to, to acquire some of the timbers that you didn't think you were going to be able to at age 15. Wow. Look at that, look at that. I'm just looking down here on my monitor just to make sure you guys can see it. I'm trying to avoid the glare, but isn't that just amazing? Unbelievable, but look, you can really see how the alcohol is pulling those oils right to the surface. I mean, look at this, very similar to something like Coca Bolo. You know, you put any kind of solvent on coca bolo and it just pulls those oils right out so i can expect to have to douse this in acetone before i even consider going anywhere near this with a glue bottle we have a beautiful set for back and sides we've got fingerboard and sorry fingerboard and binding material in this board here we've got 
Beautiful quartz sawn bridge blank material here. So the question is, what are we gonna pair um, this all Kingwood guitar with? And, my fingers. And I have selected this really just perfect set of Italian spruce. We're getting really blown out there by the studio lights. Um, but this is uh, really, really gorgeous. There's loads of kind of medullary ray in here and it's a really beautiful kind of creamy white, which is just gonna match absolutely seamlessly with the, uh, well, it would do if it wasn't covered in, in oil, but it's just gonna work so nicely um, with the sapwood uh, on the kingwood there. I think that's pretty much everything there is to say um, about this kingwood. I'm, I'm super excited to have it, to have this kind of full complement of um, parts and pieces. I think it's gonna make an amazing guitar, very, very striking. I'm sure Louis XV um, would, in fact, that's him emailing me now. Yeah, he wants, he wants this Kingwood guitar. Um, just magnificent, magnificent stuff. And you can see why the French loved it so much. Um, please let me know which, which materials you wanna see next. Um, we've got an almighty list developing already. Um, and that's it.